because um, I find that the, the, the Talmud is more understandable when I read it. We're discussing the blessing over a salted olive. What would you bless over a salted olive? What do I care if the olive is salted or not? Salting salt is, is not food. Salt is not food. Ah, that is not the right answer. The right answer, Neil. Thank you very much. Um, salting is like cooking, and it reduces the size of the olive. So if one olive si size is the, is the amount you need to bless on, what's the blessing for a salted olive? So Rabbi Zera came, you know, the new, had the traditions from Rabbi Yochanan. So Rabbi Yirmiya wanted to know how the great Rabbi Yochanan and Tiberius said a bracha on a salted olive. Because the uh, the pit was removed, so it, it doesn't have the requisite measure. So, in other words, the smallest quantity of food is considered eating is the size of an olive, and the olive with the pit removed is a little smaller. I go in the other room to look for stichot, but I can listen to you. Okay. Um, Good. Now that he's gone, we can talk about him behind his back. <laughs> um, anyhow, so um, one does not recite a blessing after eating if he ate less than an olive side of bread or any other food. Okay. So hence the dilemma. Amar le me we suffer kezayit gadol ba'inam. Who says we need the size of a large olive? Kezayit benoni ba'inam. You only need the size of a medium sized olive. Vahaika. And you have it. Vahahuda, I to the Kameh the Rabbi Yochanan, Zayed Gadol Haya, and they brought a big olive before Rabbi Yochanan that had the pit removed. So it was enough. It was the equal the size of a medium sized olive. Afagab the Shalku in the Garinite, Pashle Shiura. But still, even in the middle of the pit was removed, it's enough. The Gemara cites a proof that the halachic measure of an olive is not based, based on a a large olive. The Tanan, Zayed Shamru, Lokatan Velogadol, Ela Benuni, Ze Aguri. When the, 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 there's a Baita, sorry, a Mishnah which says, when we're talking about an olive that's not large or not small, but rather a medium sized one, that's called an Aguri. An Aguri is um, something else than an olive. Amarabi Abahu, what is exactly an aguri? Well, lo aguri shmo ela. Rabbi Abahu chimed in and he said, "No, it's not actually called an aguri. It's called a avruti, the amrila samruti, and some say it's called an aguri. She shmano agur b'tochol. Why is it called an aguri?" Because its oil is accumulated, agur, inside of it. So the source of these words is not all, not at all clear. Uh, even their correct pronunciation is unclear. There are various readings. There's avrusi, there's avruki. It might be possible to tie the tie the word to its Iranian precursor. If you want to go back to the ancient Iranian languages, um, it's. Uh, it, it could have one of these other reasons, Avrusi, Avruki, instead of um, instead of Aguri, uh, av, well, Avruti. Okay, so it might be connected to the Greek um, Avreus, right? Avreus. And that's the name Avruskin. Ah, Ruskin. Avreus in Greek means ripe, so that might be connected like a ripe uh, fruit with the oil. I guess it's a, 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 not exactly an olive, but something similar to an olive. Samrusi might come from the Greek um, hemeraios. When it appears with this Latin prefix semi, half, it means half right. But all of these explanations are purely speculative, and uh, we have no idea what we're talking about. Nema katanai. Say it's like a dispute. In the, among, among the Tanaim, where the Gemara says, "The hand who trade told me that the havu yatvi kame lavar kapara." There were two students sitting in front of bar kapara. Have you the fun of kruv v'dur maskin u'fargiot? Now, you, you recognize the pargiot? It's a chicken, right? 
Yes. Hargyot is a kind of chicken. Small it's, um, it's small, little, tiny chickens. But um, it, it translates here as pullets. So um, they brought before the, the, the sages were sitting around and they brought durmaskin and <coughs> kruv, which is uh, cabbage, exactly. Kruv durmaskin, which is the Damascian plum. There's a beautiful picture of it here. Um, the uh, or fargiot, which is a uh, pot, coulé. Yeah, very good. Yes. So Natan Bar Kapar Roshud Lechad Mem Leverech. Bar Kapar gave permission for one of them to say a blessing. Kapatz Leverech Al Hapargiot. The one he gave the permission to, he jumped and he uh, didn't exactly jump, but um, hurried. And he, he went and said the blessing over the Pargyo first. Yeah, one quick question. But, but uh, sorry, one the, question. His, his, um, his, all the other people were, were teasing him, were making fun of him. Kaas Bar Kapara Amre. Bar Kapara got angry. He said, we're not, um, we're not getting, I'm not getting, Bar Kapara said, Log al mavarechani koes. He said, I'm not, why did Bar Kapar get angry? So what, what he gave one of the students permission to bless. He had in front of him Damascian plums, cabbage, and chicken. He went and he blessed them the chicken first, the Pargyot. The, the, all the students started to say, well, what does he know? He doesn't know anything. He's a fool. Ha, ha, ha. So Bar Kapar, the leader, he got all angry. He said, I'm not getting angry at the one who's blessing, but I'm getting angry at the, one, at the ones who ridiculed him. Im chaverecha dome kemishulot am tam basar meolam ata al mali glagta alav. Barakapara said, "Why did he get angry?" He said, "I'm not. Angry. If your counterpart, the one who said the blessing on the chicken before the others, is like one who never tasted the flavor of meat, and therefore he was partial to the pullets. Is that the right way to say it? Pullets. Okay." Then why did you ridicule him? Because we have a valid system that says you bless on, on the thing you enjoy the most first. Chazar ve'amar lo al hamalag levani kuas. Then Barakapara continued and said to the second student, "I'm not a lo al mavarechani kuas lo al hamalag levani kuas ela halam mavarechani kuas. I'm not angry at the one who um, was was teasing him, but I am angry at the one who." Said the blessing. Amar lehem chokma enkan zikna enkan. There's no wisdom here. There's no elder here. In other words, you don't. Before he sh- blessed, he should have said, "Which one do I bless on first? Mm-hmm. He's the rabbi. Tana shnehem lo He was there. He was the rabbi. He was there, and it's taught that neither the one who said the blessing nor the one who ridiculed him lived out the rest of the year. Now, there's a number of things we can learn from the story. Um, the, la- the first thing is uh, be careful of these rabbis. You know, I don't know if there's, uh, you know, if, if, if he, he angered his rabbi. First of all, I was thinking about as I was walking over here, ko- this, this story. Ko'es. Moshe Rabbeinu, it never says he was ko'es. Ka'as. It never says he got angry with this word. It says, by sof. The one time, but then again, on the other hand, the, the only, the one thing that kept Moshe Rabbeinu from entering into the land was this, um, when he was katsaf, which is something perhaps similar to anger. But he didn't say anger, it doesn't use the word koas. With the, the Talmudic scholars, it does say koas. And not, not only that, but he was so, but, but, he, but for some reason there was a judgment in heaven that when he got angry that the students and the teaser both died. Both students, one who was, was ridiculing and the other one who said the blessing first, they died. Now, don't worry, I don't think this is your rabbi. You don't have to, if you make a mistake and your rabbi gets angry, you're probably not going to die. I mean, you will eventually, but, uh, you know, that's something else. So, I, might, I don't know, I, I would dare say there might not be so many people in our generation who are like this, maybe somewhere, somehow. Um, I wouldn't uh, get all scared. The other thing is, what what are we learning about this from this uh, story? Now, the, it's also this thing about the students dying. It's also the, the commentaries are perplexed about it. The the Rashba, 
in the Jerusalem Talmud, the Talmud Rishami says, the two people are gone, in other words, dead, and we still don't know what to do in the case. What's the right halacha? Do you, bend, do you bless on the one you like the most, or do you bench on... So, anyhow, if one has two kinds of food before him, well, one of which has a more significant blessing, like Borei Priya Etz, or Borei Priya Dhamma, as opposed to Shehakol, um, by whose word all things come to be, what you should say the more significant blessing first, even if you prefer the other food. So, halacha um, if you have chicken and you have a potato and you have olives before you, you start with the olives. Usually the, the rule of thumb for, for these brachas is to start with the most particular one, the one that has the fewest brachot, and then go to the more general. So the fewest brachot are, are for our etz. I mean, if you have wine, you'd start with wine, because that's you know, there's only nice. one well, there's only one thing you say ala gefen on is wine. Mm-hmm. Um, with, oh, the few, fewest brachot? The one with the fewest brachot, the more specialized the bracha. Fewest items that fall into the fewest that category. items that fall into the category that you would say such a blessing on. You start with that. So, so here he started with the most general one. However, there is another minority opinion, which is just you, you mentioned, which he mentioned here. Bar Kapara mentioned that's what he loved the most. He was more interested <coughs> in the chicken than the other ones. And he th- and he thought that it would shakol would you know, it's that would take care of everything. Yeah, um, you're not going to start eating. You're going to change your eating according to what your bracha was, huh? which was that's when it, well, that's what you would you'd have to do really. Right? Um, it's a good question. However, I just I'm looking at the halacha here. He says if you have ala etz, ala dama, and shakol, you start with the etz, and then the dama, and then the shakol. Yeah. It means you have to change your eating according to the, the yeah. center of the bracha. Well, could. Um, if you're not planning on eating the other ones, obviously you wouldn't bless them. My love, the hadha kam 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 What are they? What are they working about here? The mavarak savar shkalot to pragyot shayakol ibn ro. One, um, the one who recited the blessing over the the chicken first held that the blessing recited of both boiled vegetables and chicken is shayakol. He thought that shayakol was also the one for the boiled vegetables because some because perhaps boiled vegetables are no longer adama because they're boiled. That was his opinion. Malagleg Sabar, the one who ridiculed them, said shlakot, boiled vegetables, bore pri adama. You say for uh, blessed who creates the fruit of the earth. Hargiot shayakol nebedvoro, pullet uh, by whose word all things come to. Hilchach pera adif, and that's. But in, according to the one who ridiculed, the fruit is, is, uh, takes precedence. And the blessing is more su- specific and therefore less first. More specific. So yeah. that's an example. Okay, you're saying yayin is the, is the smallest set. And the next set is shakol is the biggest, let's say. And adama, I guess, is in the middle. It, it's from the smallest set, why, why ala etz? Sorry, ala gefen, and then you would have ala etz, al pri pri al dama, and and then Why afterwards shakol. What about mazonot? Ah, if you have mazonot, that would the question is what would you do first, mazonot or etz? Probably do etz and then mazonot. I'm not sure. You have to check. I don't know that. Um, the Gemara rejects the explanation that we just said that the um, that the one who said the blessing thought that shehakol was also for the chicken and also for the boiled vegetables, and the one who was ridiculing one said it's um, the chicken is shehakol and the, um, the the boiled vegetables were adama, so therefore he should have said okay. Everyone says. Gemara rejects this and says everybody agrees that boiled vegetables and pullets are shakol. The hachiba my svara come come So, so in here, what are they arguing over? Mar svara chavivadif. One says that the one you like the most is the first one you bless on. The other says the kruv adif the zayin. The cabbage take precedence because it nourishes. So cabbage, 
very healthy food. Okay, I'm Rabbi Zera, Ki Avenon Be Rav, the Ki Avenon Be Rav Huna, Amarlan, Hane Gal Gargaride de Lifta, Tra Minhu Prima Rabba Bore Priyadama. Rabbi Zera said when they were in the study hall of Rav Huna, he said to us, the turn of heads. Heads of turnips, if they're cut into very small pieces, bere priyadama, because in doing it, he enhances their flavor. And if he cuts them slightly into slightly larger pieces, he recites shehakol, niya bidvara. Viki atan levei rav Yehuda, when they came to the study hall of Rav Yehuda, he said to them, idi v'idi bere priyadama, says both turnip heads, if they're cut finely or cut not so fine, it's, uh, they're all bere priyadama. Vaha, the the fact that he cuts them extensively is only in order to sweeten the flavor. Amar Ravashi ki havenim be Rav Kahana Amar lan tavshila de silka velo dula mapshu ba kimcha bore priyadam. So similar note, Rav Ashi. When we were in the study hall of Rav Kahana, he said to us, if you have a cooked dish of beets, to which they added, did not add a significant amount of flour, it's mostly beets, and just insignificant amount of flour perhaps, it's bore priyadama. The lifta, the mapshu ba kimchatzve bore minimizuma. If it's a cooked dish, of a cooked dish of turnips, which they typically add more flour to, then it's very many names on it. We just have to take a message. Okay. And when was that? Hadar Amar Idi Idi Bore Priyadam. 10.30, yes. Haidi Shadi Bekim Katfe Ledaboke Ba'alma Avdila. So, again, if you have a cooked dish of beets, there's not a whole lot of flour in it. What's the brachy saying? Bere pri adama. If you have a cooked dish of turnips, which they usually add more flour to, bere minimus anot. So after hearing this, Rabbi Gahana, he re- reconsidered his previous understanding. And he said, both these and these, bere minimus anot. Nadar remark, idi v'idi bore pri adama. He said, both these and these, you say bere pri adama. With the turnips, because when they added the flour to the turnips, they just did it so it would stick together. So the, the question is, if you have a cooked dish of vegetables and water, what do you, what's the bracha that you say? Before eating vegetables to which flour is added for purposes of consistency, you still say bore priyadama. Because basically he's eating it for the vegetables and not for the flour. Okay. Amar Abchiste Tavshil... Fine. Okay. Amar Abchiste Tavshil Sutradi in Yafei Lele Vatov Le'enayim. So Abchiste said, a cooked dish of beets it's good for your heart, it's yeah. good for your eyes, yeah. but kol shekein levenei ma'ayim, and it's mostly good for your intestines. Amar Abayi Yehudi Yatzvi Yatzvi Abayi Yatzvi Abayi Yatzvi Abayi said that's especially when you when, when the dish sits in the stove and makes a tuch tuch sound. What is tuch tuch? It's good. Boiling. Now I don't know why why do they say tuch tuch and don't just say roteach? I mean, did they have this word roteach back then? Perhaps, I assume so. It's an ancient word, right? Mm-hmm. Well, um, perhaps you folks in Radio Land can send that in. Mm-hmm. The reason for saying tuk tuk as opposed to one word, roteach. Amar, Rapapa, so eat your beets, have your borscht, it's good for your heart, good for, especially good for your intestines. Okay. Amar, Rapapa, pshitali maya desilka. Kasilka. Now, Papa said, what, what if you, you cook uh, beets? What's the status of the bracha you make on the on the water after you cook the beets and boil the beets in it? I just what Papa said, Chitali Maya de Salka, Maya de Silka Kisilka. It's just like the beets itself. Uh Maya de Lifta Kalifta. So you don't agree with Rab Papa. According to Rab Papa, if you boil turnips in water, and then you have the water, the water has the same status as the vegetables. Before eating soup, the halacha lamasa, before eating soup made from vegetables, 
that are typically eaten with their broth, if you cook them with the intention to eat the vegetables as well, he says, very pre I think that means if even you have the broth, just the broth, and you have the, the intention was the vegetables, and it's a mere adama, so it's turnip or beet uh, soup. Adama. Umaya de kulu shalke ke fulhu shalke. So, It says water with all boiled vegetables. The water were boiled, water, sorry, water in which all boiled vegetables were boiled has the same status as the boiled vegetables. However, by Rapapa, Rapapa raised the dilemma. He said, Maya de Shivta Mai, what about water in which dill is boiled? The Matukitama Avi. What was the reason for boiling the, the dill? Was it in order to sweeten the taste, or was it in order to remove residual filth? It was for cleaning the dill. If the dill was added to flavor the food, then the water in which it was boiled should be treated like water in which any other vegetable was boiled. However, if the dill was merely added to absorb the residue of the soup, then there was never any intention to flavor the dish, then one should not say the blessing over the water. If it's for the flavor, there's a problem. If it's not for the flavor, there's no problem. You're adding just the water. Just talking about the water. water. Itself. No broth on the water. It's mm-hmm. kind of surprising. Because people like would relish the water. I think it has to do with your state of mind. You relish the water. If you enjoy it, okay. You could you could say anything. If you're doing it and you're getting enjoyment from it, you have to bl- you have to say a broth. Because anything you're enjoying. So Tashma HaShevetz, Shevetz means dill, come in here. The dill, here's a resolution from a different mission. Misha Natna Tam Bakadera, Ein Ba Mishum Truma, Ve En Mitama, En Matama Tumat Ochli. Shmamina La Matuki Tama Abdi La Shmamin. So another mission says the dill, the dill, once it is given the flavor to the pot, it no longer has any value, and it's not subject to the halach of the truma, and it can no longer become impure. So we talk, the dill itself, you, you put the dill in, the dill gave a flavor to your soup or whatever, the dill is taken out. If somebody wants to eat, that that dill cannot, is no longer has the status if it was truma of being truma, and it no longer can receive or become impure. So we say so that proves that the dill was used to sweeten the taste. So basically, once dill was cooked and flavored in which the food was cooked, it doesn't have a legal status of, as far as a food as of, with the halakha to be carried. But what does that have to do with the bracha? So what do we what do we say? What kind of a bracha will we say on? We we already have the water in which the dill was boiled, right? But the dill itself, uh, I don't know. Amar Rav Chia Bar Ashi Pat Tsnuma Vakara Mavarchin Allah Hamotzi. It's a different subject. Rav Chia Bar Ashi said, what, 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 what brach, let's say you put dry bread in a bowl to soak. Mm-hmm. Rav Ashi says, you say Hamotzi on it. Ufliga de Rav Chia. But this contradicts what Rav Chia said. Rabbi Chia said the blessing must conclude with the beginning of the breaking of the loaf of bread. The dried bread has already been sliced and separated. So the question, the whole question is where, where, where do you say the bracha over the bread? Let's say it's already cut up. Do you say, um, do you say it when you're breaking it, or do you say it when it's complete, complete loaf? This is the whole question we're going to be dealing with. Okay, the question, the Tosfa explains a little bit about the question. Mm-hmm. Tosfa says the difficulty with this halacha in determining, is determining which case we're exactly talking about. It's not exactly clear what case we're talking about. Um, in a case where the bread stands alone, you may say hamotzi. 
do you say a motzi over it, or does it referring to it if you just have the bread alone? It's a motzi. What's the problem? But maybe it's a case where it's together with other loaves of bread. Or maybe and you have to choose to prefer or to equate it to the other ones. So some explain that this refers not to a situation that already occurred, but rather to teach the uh, chatzila, ab initio, that one may take the bread, crumble it, soak it, and only after you recite the bracha. It sounds like what we do today, right? Crumble it, soak it. For what? Slice, if you have a full full loaf of bread there, do you say the bracha on the bread and then slice it? Or do you yeah. slice it and you have a slice of bread and you say the bracha on the piece of bread you're going to eat? Well, on Shabbos, you... On the whole one, yeah. You on the whole one. And then you slice it. So, according to another of the of the uh, Mepharshim, If uh, some say it's a situation where that already occurred, but rather ab initio, you can take the bread, crumble it, soak it, then say the blessing. He doesn't need to say the blessing while he's cutting the whole loaf. So, Rava mavarech v'chakach According to Rava, say the bracha and then you break it. Naharde abdik rabichia. The sages of Naharde, Nahardea acted like um, Rabbi Chia. What did Rabbi Chia say? You can crumble it, smush it up, whatever, and say the bracha. It doesn't have to be complete. R- Rabbi said, no, you start with the full piece of bread, and then you say the bracha, and then you cut it up. So, in the harder they did like Rabbi Chia. They would recite the blessing, blessing as they were breaking the bread, and conclude the bre- blessing as he finished breaking the piece of bread. That's how they did it in the harder. The Rabbanan Avde Karava, and the, the rabbis did like Rava, who said you should have a very a, a full piece of bread, that's the way to do it. Amar Ravina, Amar Le Im, Amra Li Im. Ravina said, My mommy told me this. Mommy. Ravina's mommy. He didn't say Ima, he said M. So he said, Mava. My mother told me, Avuch Aved Karabichia. Your father, she, he said, your father always did like Rabbi Chia. So that's the Vedric on the Buddha. She actually said this to him in Yiddish. No? We're talking about the uh, uh, fifth century of the common era? No, I think it's a little pre Yiddish, don't you think? Maybe it was just getting started. Yeah. Who knows? Um, so, anyhow. Uh, Ravina said, my mother said to me the following, your father, you would always do like Rabbi Chia. It could be soaked in water, crumbled up, and afterwards you could say the bracha. Rabban and Abdi Karava, Rabbi Chia, Sarich Shetich Lebracha Imapat. Rabbi Chia said the blessing must conclude with the beginning of the breaking of the loaf of bread. So that Rabbi Chia was there talking about the dry bread, when he said about crushing it up. However, Rabbi Chia, when he talked about a whole loaf of bread that was fresh, he would say, the dried, um, the blessing must conclude with the beginning of the breaking of the loaf of bread. Dried bread was different. The way, the way Rabbi Chia said it was, Tarich Shetich Bracha Im Hapat. What does that mean? The blessing must conclude with the bread. It means conclude with the beginning of the breaking of the loaf of bread. So, and the rabbis did like rabbi, and the law is like rabbi. Start with the full piece of bread. First bless and then bread. Itmar, What do you do? There's a dispute among Amoraim about what you do if you brought. Piece, slices of bread and whole loaves together before ta- partaking of a meal. Amar Rav Huna, Mavarach al Titin Potera Tishlemin. Rav Huna said, "You say the blessing over the, of the pieces of bread or the slices of bread, and afterwards, we, and that and that will um, exempt everything else. That will that will be good for every. The blessing will hold for every, all the other bread as well." But Rabbi Yochanan Amar Shlema Mitzvah Mina Mukhar. Rabbi Yochanan says, no, the whole bread is the, is the choicest way to do the mitzvah. 
optimal manner to do the mitzvah. About prusa shel chitin or shlemish shel seurin, do you recall the berach al prusa shel chitin or poter to shlemish shel seurin? But if you have slight pieces of wheat bread and full pieces of full loaves of of barley bread, everybody says you, you first say it on the sliced pieces of wheat bread because wheat bread is preferable to barley bread. Even today, wheat bread. I would like to try barley bread. Yeah. Back then, it was considered animal food. It was considered much less than. Amar Rabbi Yirmiya Bar Abba Kitanai. Rabbi Yirmiya Arba says the dispute between Rabbi Huna and Rabbi Yochanan is parallel to a Tanaitic dispute. We said, Tormin Batsal Katan Shalem, Aval Lo Chetzi Batsal Gadol. Okay, this is the halakha to Truma. We say, even we, we, have, we have onions, right? Onions that are Truma. Even though the onions from which the Truma must be separated are divided equally between the two. Between the two, what? Uh, still, Tormin Batsal Katan Shalem, Avalo Chetzi Batsal Gadol. What if you, you have a choice between a small, complete onion to take truma from, or a large, half an onion to take truma from? The question is that's the question. So, according to one Tana says, you take uh, truma from the whole small onion, but not the half a large onion. Rabbi Yehuda says, no, you take you take the larger one, even though it's half, and you take truma from that. Rabbi Yehuda, my low ki ele chetzi vatsal gadol, my love bahaka miflagi. What is, is it not that they are to agree, disagree over this point? What? Is it not that they disagree over this point that one sage, Rabbi Yehuda, held that the more significant takes precedence, therefore half a large onion, which is of superior quality, is preferable, and the first time I held that the whole item takes precedence? Is that, it, it seems clear that what you, what's taking precedence? The, the, what do we have here? We have two onions. Two onions? Two onions. Half a large onion? And let's say the large onion is superior in quality to the small whole onion. There's a small whole onion that's inferior in quality, and a half of a large onion that is superior in quality. So that's why are we why do we bring this? We bring this to try to learn the law of if we have slices of bread and whole loaves of bread. If you have a coin there, who, okay, now we don't have a coin to give the, the truma to. Back then they're talking about a time when you actually had a coin, you could bring the truma to. So if the coin was there, there's another consideration to take in. It says, de leka coin. There's a dispute over if the coin was not there. What does it matter if the coin was there or not? The tanan, komakom shesh coin torem al ayafet. Whenever there's a Kohen, you give him the better. But when there's not a Kohen there, you take the truma from whatever's going to last longer. So there's a better, so it'll still be uh, in good condition by the time it gets to the Kohen. So if you have a superior quality, but it's cut in half, maybe maybe if it's if there's some reason that that's going to last longer. What if it's if the onion's cut? It's not going to last as a a whole onion, right? Absolutely. Okay, so that's another thing you can see. So whatever will last longer. Rabbi Yehuda Omer En Torim Ela Atmina Yafe. Rabbi Yehuda says no, even if it's not going to last, you, even if it's cut in half, it's not going to last if it's cut in half. So you, but it's still, it's a better quality. Amar of Nachman Rabbi Yitzchak Vireh Shemayim Yotzei Adesh Shneihem Rabbi Nachman Rabbi Yitzchak said a God-fearing individual fulfills both. And who's the God-fearing individual? Manu, Mar Bered Ravina. We're talking about Mar son of Ravina. The Mar Bered Ravina maniach kusa b'tov hashlema uvotzeh. Mar Bered Ravina had an interesting solution. If he had a whole and a whole loaves and slices, he said you would place the take the the whole loaves 
let's say you have two whole loaves and you have slices, you put the slices in between the whole loaves and you bless in the whole bunch. What if you just had one whole loaf? Would you have to like break into it and put the lo- slices in? <laughs> what's, what's he talking about here? Tane nami kamei derav, Tane Tane kamei derav Nachman bar Yitzchak manecha prusa b'toch shlema uvotzei mavarech. The Tana recited a bracha before Rav Nachman bar Yitzchak, and he said, one places the piece inside the whole loaf and then breaks the bread and recites a blessing. It sounds like he's breaking a whole loaf of bread and stuffing a slice in it, doesn't it? So whatever he that was his solution. You put the slice into the whole loaf, whatever that means. Amarle Mashimcha Rav Nachman bar Yitzchak said to the one reciting the the verb, uh, reciting by heart the, the Mishnah, the Brayta. He said, "What's your name?" He said, "Amarle Shalman." My name's Shalman. Sounds like Shalom, right? Peace. Amarle Shalomata Ushlema Mishnatcha says, "You are peace," and, and peace also means whole. And your 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 teaching is complete. Why? Because by means of this brayta, you manage to fuse disputing opinions. The the shesam to shalom ben atzamidim, and you made peace between the students. Amar Papa, Hakol Modim BePesach Shemaniach Prusa B'Toch Shlema Uvotzea My Taima Lechem Oni We have an example of this that we do every year on the Passover Seder. We have two whole slices of matzah, and we have a broken matzah. What are we, where's the broken matzah? It's in between the two whole matzahs. Why is it broken? Because it's called the bread of affliction. Amar, Amar Rabbi Abba, B'Shabbat Chayav Adam L'Vutzea Al Shtei Kikorot. Rabbi Abba says, on Shabbos, you need to bench on two whole loaves of bread, as you mentioned before. My time at Lechem Mishneh Ketiv. The reason we have two whole loaves on Shabbos is because with regards to Shabbos, it was said in Exodus 16, twice as much bread, Lechem so, so, so we have two, to commemorate this, we have two loaves of bread. Amar Ravashi, Chazen alil Rav Kahana danaki tarte uvatsach hada. Ravashi said, I saw Rav Kahana, he'd take two loaves and he'd break one. Rav Zera hava batsa akula sherut. Rav Zera would break up one large piece from the loaf and eat it from the entire Shabbat meal. Ravina said to Ravashi about this. Again, Rabbi Zera would have this, take this big hunk of bread on Shabbos. So Ravina said, uh, that's Rabbi Zera. Ravina and Ravashi, they knew about this. So Ravina asked Ravashi, it appears like Rav Tanuta, like gluttony. Take such a big piece. Ravashi answered him and said, don't worry. Haka mitchazeg Rav Tanuta Amar le kevan de kol yoma lo ka'avirachi He doesn't do that any other day of the week. He's only doing it on Shabbat. Vahaidna ka'avid lo mitchazeg Rav Tanuta And now because he's doing it in deference to the mitzvah of Shabbat, then it's okay. It doesn't look like gluttony. Rav Ami v'Rav Asi ki hava mitrame lehu rifta de eruva de eruva with regard to eating in Shabbat, the Gemara talks about how Rav Ami and Rav Asi, when they had the opportunity to use the bread for the Eruv, when the Shabbat meal would present itself, they would say a motzi on the bread for the Eruv. They said an explanation of this, Amre, Awil v'itzavid be mitzvah, chada David be mitzvah achariti. Because we did one mitzvah on it with the Eruv, we can do another mitzvah on it with the, the, the food for Shabbat, the bread for Shabbat. So, the question is, what what was this Eruv? There are different opinions. Some say that the era that they're returning to is joining courtyards, so we can transfer between different houses facing an open courtyard. That you, that you, would, you would take a, everybody would put bread together, and this would, this would change it from a sh- uh, public domain into a private domain. Or some say it was the era of Tavshilin, joining cook dishes if you have Shabbat going into a, a holiday, and you, you're not supposed to prepare from Shabbat to the holiday. So you have Eric Toshilin and Friday afternoon. Okay, one last piece in the next page. 
Amarav Tol Baruch Tol Baruch. Continuing to dis- discuss the halachot of breaking bread, Rav said, Rav said, one who broke bread and before eating it offered one a piece to another person and says, take and say a bracha, take and say a bracha. In other words, breaks the bread, it says, amotzilechem in arts. And then before eating from that piece of bread, so he, he he hands some bread to somebody else and says, here, take and say a bracha, take and say a bracha. Does he have to say another bracha before eating? Is it, or can he just eat after he said, take and say a bracha to build it? So according to Rav, if you if he said the bracha and then you said take and say a bracha, einod tzarich levarech. It's enough. He doesn't have to say a bracha again. We'll get into why in a second. Have melech, have lifta, and tzarich levarech. But if he says the bracha, motzi lechem in arutz, then he says bring bring some salt, bring some dips. Then according to Rav, he would need to say a motzi again because he made a hefsek. He, he made a separation between the blessing and the action. Rabbi Yochanan Amar Afilu Hevi Melech Hevi Liftan. According to Rabbi Yochanan, even if he said bring bring this, he said the bracha once the Arts, and he said bring the salt, bring the hummus, bring whatever. Still, in that case, according to Rabbi Yochanan, he doesn't have to say another bracha. Gabel Tore, Gabel Tore says, go feed the animals, feed the animals. Then what is he? If you say the bracha, Motzi, and then before you eating, you say, oh, go feed the cow, feed the feed the feed the sheep. Right? Tzarich According to Rabbi Yochanan, in that case, no, if he said, take take and say a bracha, he doesn't have to say another bracha. If he says, bring the salt, bring the bring the, bring the the dips, no, he still doesn't have to say a bracha. But if he said, go feed the animals, then he would have to say another bracha. According to Rav Sheshit, even if he said, go and feed the animals before he ate, after saying the bracha and before he ate, he said, feed the animals, he doesn't need to say another bracha. Amarav Yehuda Amarav, Asor Adam Shochol Kodum Shuten Machal Vento. Forbidden for a person to eat before he's fed his animals. Shnei Amar Benatati Ese Besadim Techa Bahadar Bachalta Besavata. Because first it says, I give food for your animals, and then the, right, only afterwards does the verse say, and then you can eat and be satisfied. So. In the verse, the preparation for food for one's cattle precedes the preparation of his own food. So consequently, it's considered part of the preparation for one's own meal. So according to Halakha, L'Chathchila, Ab Inishio, a person may not interrupt between writing or reciting the blessing and eating, with either speech or even prolonged silence, even if he waits too long. You're supposed to um, as long as it takes to say Shalom Aleichem Rabbi Omori. What's that? Shalom Aleichem Rabbi Omori. What's that? No, what's that? Is that what? Is, what? The time, amount, the time it would take you to say that. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, Where, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. The, 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 the halakha, for some reason, it says that the time it would take to say Shalom Aleichem Rabbi Omori. That's the. That's at least talking about the between the words of the blessing itself. Baruch. You know, some people will take a long time to say brachas. You ever see a guy who takes a long time in between the words? Mm-hmm. Uh, according to Allah, there's only a certain amount of time. Now, somebody could say, Shalom Alechem Mori Rabbi. It could take that much time to say it, so it could be a, a, bit, a longer amount of time. However, here, um, in other words, Initially, you say, you say the bracha over the food, you're supposed to eat the food immediately after. Right? You're not interrupt the speech or too, or too long a silence. Nevertheless, if his interruption was for the purpose of eating, he doesn't need to say the blessing again. So e- in this sense, even if somebody if somebody says, go and hit, say a bracha, it's not an interruption because it has to do with the meal. If he says, bring the salt, bring the, bring the dips, that's also not an interruption. Bidiyavad. Uh, doesn't have to say another bracha. If he even says, go and feed the animals, it's not an interruption. And the halakha is in accordance with the opinion of Rav Shishan. 